Hello everyone, welcome back to my podcast. It's your girl Shakita Torres. And so I want to kind of give you guys an update before I get into today's um episode. And so I have actually meant to post this particular live like last Sunday, but I was so busy, you guys. I had got so caught up with trying to um finish out this directory and get it launched. And I forgot. And then I was tired. (laughs) And so um, see the season. This particular series is still going on. Um, I didn't go live this past week, um, but I am going to go live this week, okay, to do part three of this series. And again, it has been a blessing for me. Um, It's been a blessing for so many other people. Um, But I do want to make a couple of announcements really quickly. So first, you guys, the Faith and Mental Wellness Directory has officially launched, okay? So let me tell you, like, let me just be full transparent here, okay? So the directory, um, you know, initially, you know, God told me in the fall to create this directory, but he will let me know when, right? So I told you guys before when I first... um, uh, started working on the Faith and Mental Wellness Summit, you know, how God was giving me instructions and giving and telling me what to do and when to do it. And so um, the directory was the same. So back in April, he told me to go ahead and um, start working on the directory. He even showed me the domain name, y'all. God is just so like, whew, he never ceases to amaze me. Um, the only thing was uh, with the domain, I was ready to launch this thing in April, April 2023. But I could not because the domain had to be um, on GoDaddy for about 60 days. So for those of you who are you know, entrepreneurs or are trying to create something, you have an idea, get your domain ASAP, okay? Because if you want to transfer your domain to a different site, most of the time they'll hold it for 60 days. So but which was okay, you know, gave me time to work on some other things in my business, in my ministry. But um, the directory is for those who are Christian life coaches, Christian therapists, um, psychiatrists, psychologists, certified uh, mental health professionals, those who are certified um, Christian counselors in the helping profession when it comes to faith and mental wellness, Okay. And I'm so excited. I have got it. Ooh, he didn't give me so much revelation about this directory um, and what to expect, to expect. And so initially, I was going to use a different um, company to do the directory. But as I began to start working on um, preparing to launch that one, oh, God, I ran into so many issues. And I said, God, oh, no. I said, I cannot launch this thing. And it'd be halfway. I love to represent the kingdom well. Okay. Now I'm perfectionist, but in excellence. Okay. So I had to end up switching um, companies because the other company, it was not cutting it for me. Okay. I wanted this to be a beautiful site. I wanted it to be easy to navigate. I didn't want to have any issues with the, uh, with the tech stuff and all that. So I had to spend time like learning a whole new system. And I had to learn all the basics of that system within a week (laughs) because my goal was to launch this by Father's Day. And I did. (laughs) Um, But it did not come without without a cost, both financially and energy wise. So between working and, you know, being on social media and spending time with my family, I was working on this directory every single day for hours. Okay. Um, but it's out. It's so much more to come with it. Uh, we are working on letting other providers know about this directory. The first month to join is 30, 30 days free and at a very low cost for what you get for only $15 a month. That's the introductory rate for how long? I don't know, but I want it to be affordable, um, but also it be a robust system. And it is. It's I love it. I love this. I love the platform. I shared it with some of my friends and my community and they're like, Shakita, this is excellent. This is this is amazing. So I'm excited about it. So for those of you who are looking for a provider of this kind, um, just give it some time to grow. Give it some time to grow. Uh, we'll have more blogs up there, resources for you guys over time. 
Um, there's so much vision God's given me for this directory, y'all. It's just, I'm just honestly humbled and honored that God would ask me to do this because he could have had any other therapist or any other believer do something like this. And my husband was telling me, he said, babe, the Lord said he told you to do it because he can trust you. He know, he know that you'll be a good steward over it and you'll do it well. And so I'm excited about that. So if you're interested in joining the directory, head on over to um, www.faithandmentalwellness.faith and also um, sign up for the newsletter for those of you who are visiting the site. And the link is also in the description box of this podcast episode. Okay. Um, the next thing is um, June 26th, I'm having a live webinar to talk about the uh, my certification program to become a Christian life coach. Y'all, it's going to be amazing. Okay. The webinar is going to be is going to be great. I'm gonna answer I'm gonna answer all you guys' questions. I'm gonna share the vision for it and all that good stuff. Um, I'm going to record it as well. So you know, for those of you who can't make it, who's interested, still sign up because I'll email the um, recording to you if you're interested in that. Okay. Um, and so we'll actually start um, the classes for that in July. So I'm looking at like July 10th on a Monday. This is when we'll have our first uh, class. So it'll be a mixture of um, virtual, like we'll cut high, it'll, it'll be hybrid. So I'll be teaching live, but I'll also have some pre recorded material up there uh, for basic stuff. But I will be um, teaching live as well. So people can ask me questions. I'm a person like that. I love to interact with people. Okay. So if they have questions, I want them to be able to ask questions. I want to, you know, be able to see your face, hear your tone, you know, see your personality. I, I love that. I love that. Okay. So um, if you're interested in that, join it. <laughs> I'm so excited. And so I'm also going to um, do Seize the Season Part 3 sometime this week. I don't have a set day and time. Um, my schedule has been not crazy, but just busy <laughs> in a good way. Busy in a good way. <laughs> um, and so, yes. So keep your eye out for that. Be sure to follow me on social media. I try to post as much as I can to keep people up to date about what's going on. Those of you who are interested in knowing what's going on with Shakita and my ministry, which is also my business. And so thank you all so much for listening. Um, you can definitely listen to part two in just a moment. It is going to be amazing. It's going to bless your life. Okay. And I will talk to you guys soon. Um, yeah, a part two of Seize the Seasons. My goodness. So welcome to um, Facebook and YouTube. Hello, you all. Thank y'all so much for joining in. I will give um, Instagram just a moment or two just to let people know that I'm on live. Um, today, I will be going into part two of a series that God gave me called Seize the Season. <clears throat> Excuse me seize the season so <clears throat> welcome everyone welcome 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 my name is Shakita Torres I am a um I'm a licensed therapist I'm a life coach I'm many things but most importantly I am a daughter of the most high God so welcome everyone uh, my plan was to go live on uh, last night but I um, had some things come up uh, with my family which was a good thing it wasn't um a bad thing at all um for my family which family comes first right so, yes, I'm low key Bree. Uh, the replay will be up uh, for you guys here on Instagram, on YouTube, um, and also on Facebook. So, yes, be sure to tune in. I'm not going to be before you guys long. I'm going to share exactly what God has given me for you all about season the season. And so, before I get into it, um, I'll go ahead and just um, share a little recap and give you guys, a, um, you know, uh, an announcement or two. So the, um, first, uh, for those of you who are interested, I am hosting my free webinar on June 26 for my uh, new program coming out for becoming a certified Christian life coach. It's going to be amazing. You can go to Eventbrite and register for that. Um, I can't wait to see everyone. So far, we have almost 40 people registered. So I'm so excited about that. Excited to share with you all the vision um, to help you guys to be equipped, to be amazing and um, just anointed life coaches, okay? So please join me if you're interested in that. Um, also, um, I'm launching a faith and mental wellness directory this month. I don't have a... <laughs> my husband back from the background. <laughs> um, I don't have a launch date yet, 
but I will pretty soon for this month. So stay tuned for that. So if you are a licensed therapist, if you are a certified life coach, pastoral counselor, um, you know, working in like the mental health, mental wellness um, area, and you are a believer of Christ Jesus, this is for you, okay, to give you a place to be able to market your services. So it's going to be amazing, you guys. I've been working really hard um, on that. And so, yes, so stay tuned. All righty. And so I'm going to give you guys a quick recap of part one. It was amazing. The feedback I received from some of you all has been great as well. Um, it blessed me so much because it really brought me back to a place. So whenever I first got saved and how God had really did a work in my life and how far I have come when it comes to my walk and my journey with the Holy Spirit and God, of course. And so I shared about, you know, how God was telling me to, you know, compare our journey um, to a tree. Right. I walked with him to a tree and I shared about the infant stages and how in the infant stages, you know, you have to be water. You need so much nutrients. Right. You're excited. You're a baby. You're eating everything that you see. Right. And you're just happy to be a Christian because you have truly had an encounter with the Holy Spirit where you should have anyway. OK, hopefully you did. And so that was my experience as a new believer. Oh, my gosh, it was amazing. Right. So today we're going to go into part two of that. And that part is called the pruning season. OK, <laughs> so before I get into it, I want to say a quick prayer. And so, Holy Spirit, I just bless you tonight, God. God, I bless you, God, for your people. Holy Spirit, speak through me, God. God, just give me the words to say in which they can understand. Holy Spirit, I give you free reign to be able to just speak to me um, about anything that you want to say, God, because, God, this is your platform. And so, Holy Spirit, I invite you in. I invite you, Lord God, to just um, flow through me, Lord, and just to have your way. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen and amen. amen. All right. And so, let me go to my notes here. Once again, this was so good. As I said before, I don't plan on being before you long unless God says otherwise. Okay. And so this is what happens, right? <laughs> so think about this, you guys. This is so beautiful. Even coming to me now. But, um, now, thank you, God. So like when you were an infant and you were baby, right? But, oh, she's so cute. He's so cute. Oh, my God. It's like you're just amazing, right? Like Life is just a breeze, right? But then you start going to like that toddler phase where you're like, where your parents are trying to like get you to, to like to do certain things a certain way. You can't get away with the things you used to do whenever you were a baby or going into a toddler, right? So it's the same way when it comes to how God deals with us whenever we are going through um, the pruning season. And so for my journey and for people I've counseled over the years, what happens is after they start to come out of that, that infant stage, right, that baby stage, God begins to prune them. And so the very first thing God begins to um, prune you all is friendships, right? People you hang around with, <laughs> um, things that you're doing that you shouldn't be doing, right? And so tonight I'm going to teach a little bit more about friendships and, you know, what that looks like and how that should be, okay? Mm. And so here's a little statement that I found whenever I was going through, you know, Google, it says Jesus was telling the disciples and all Christians that he was setting them apart for a lifestyle of bearing fruit. Their fruit will come as a result of God's intentional pruning. A wise vine dresser doesn't let his fruit just grow wildly on its own. It is the action taken by a gardener to cut away or loop off any growth on a branch or a tree that is undesirable in order to produce more long term growth. <laughs> and you guys, the pruning season does not feel good. During that season, it feels like you're losing friends, like you know, things, you're having problems in your family. It's like, God, where are you? Have you forgotten about me? It's like a part of us, like even as you mature, you still want to kind of fit in and you like you love your friends and your family, but it's like you want to hang on to those, even those who are causing um, you to have dead weight. And so God wants to cut some of those things away. So if you look at John um, chapter 15, it says this. 
and uh, uh, first verse one. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. OK, he is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that that does bear fruit, he prunes it. So even the fruit that you're having, God's going to prune that fruit so that it can also bear more fruit. All right. Verse three, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Verse four, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. <laughs> so you cannot cut away your own branches because it's hard. <laughs> Imagine a tree trying to cut away his own stuff. It's difficult, right? The same thing for us. We have to abide in God and allow God to to um, to, to lead us to lead us and be, and be able to do that work for us. Okay. Um, verse five. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Verse six, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. Verse seven, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so, so prove to be my disciples. And so to me, this confirms everything that I literally was just saying. Um, you know, God knows what's ahead. God was telling me I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning. I am the end. And so God knows exactly what we need for us to continue to bear fruit, right? And of course, you know, it doesn't feel good. It does not feel good. At the end, you know, I'll share with you some things you can do to kind of help minimize like some of that frustration you may feel when it comes to this pruning season. All right. Um, keep going. And so again, I began to look at the trees, right? And um, when I looked up, okay, when are trees typically pruned? And it said here that they're pruned typically between November through March, but most trees are dormant, which makes it the ideal time for the following reasons. During this time, they are they are less susceptible to the, to insects or diseases. Um, the tree does not go through, um, go through tr the, the tree can go through trimming throughout the year, though. And so pruning is more intense and trimming is like the little things, right? They come along the way, uh, you know, uh, you know, along the way or the tree is trying to grow. And so honestly, to be truthful, you know, as you continue to mature in God, you're going to always have some trimming away. Right. But the core of the work is done in your beginning phases where it should be anyway. And if it's not, this is what stunts a believer's growth, right? Have you ever seen someone who's been saved, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, and they really don't have that much fruit, right? Or they just seem like they're stagnant. I know, I know I've seen that with people, right? It's because they haven't allowed God to trim away some things. They haven't allowed God to prune them from relationships, situations, um, or even to heal them, right? And so this is why it's so important for you to seize that season. God is saying, seize the season, take hold of it with everything that you have. So you ain't got to keep, you know, have to be delayed in your growth, or you won't miss out on the things that God wants to do for you in your life, right? And so, you know, I love how God, <laughs> what he does, I told you earlier, and, you know, in part one of this series is that, you know, God wooed me and my husband in, the, in our infant stages, right? Like we fell in love with God. So he wanted to make sure our roots were planted in him, that we got to know him for ourselves. Because if he, like, if you get saved today and have an encounter with God today, he begin to start pruning you right now, you run away. You like, woof. That's why it's so important to have a community and true discipleship, because I've definitely seen where babies, including myself, have joined a ministry and they're trying to prune you right away. 
You can't do that. You can't expect the baby to behave and act like a mature person. I mean, and you know, for me, when I see that's where um, religion come in, right? The religious spirit come in at. They try to attack, you know, the baby who just got saved, who with all this joy for God, with all these rules and regulations. And you have to flow with the Holy Spirit and give them time to get their feet and their roots rooted in good soil, which is the word of God, your relationship with God, okay? So, ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. That was good to me, right? And so I came across this article, and I was just like, whew, it was just so amazing, okay? So, first of all, I'm not a gardener, okay? Um, people who are gardeners, who do tree work or anything of that nature, they know all about what I'm getting ready to talk about, okay? So this is an article, let me pull it up real quick, <clears throat> that I came across, um, it's called, it's from Colorado State University, and it's called Pruning Cuts, and it talks about <laughs> the different type of pruning cuts that you can, um, have, right? They have, let me go real quick. We have the thinning cuts, reduction cuts, and the heading cuts. And I'm not going to go in every single one of them in great, great detail. But when I was reading through those three, I was like, this is why you have to have a professional, <laughs> which is the Holy Spirit. God knows exactly what we need, where we need to have the cuts at, what, you know, what he needs to cut away. So that way your, your core, which is your leader, which is your spirit would not be um, just completely damaged or just completely dried up. Right. Because you can have branches that pull from, you know, the core of who you are that's pulling away, you know, your spirituality, that's pulling you away from your time with God, that's pulling you away from the things God has called you to do. Right. And God has to cut those things off. And oftentimes, you're like, oh man, well, God, I love this person. Oh God, you know, we were best friends since we was in the third grade. And you have all these different things that, why God, but why? Why did you cut them away? Why they turn their back on me? And I thought about also Joseph, you know, Joseph was so excited to tell his, um, his brothers, hey, God showed me that I was, you know, in leadership over you all. And they pretty much tried to, you know, they sold him. They pretty much tried try to kill him, right? And so Joseph wasn't aware that his brother already had some like underlying issues with him. They didn't see that he, you know, was jealous of him. He was gullible in the area. And oftentimes as a baby in Christ, we are gullible. We are more, um, we, it's easy to like deceive us because we don't know any better. We're just excited and we want to love people. Okay. And so what happened, you know, Joseph told them and they, and they pretty much tried to kill him, but he ended up being, being, um, being sold. Right. And so God sees what we don't see. Again, he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. And then also, I know this is from my, my own testimony. There are times when God will show me a person and I'm like, no, 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 no. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe God, what I'm seeing, I'm being judgmental. But God is trying to like strengthen your discernment so you can see a person's motives in their heart. And so if you feel like you're seeing things in your dreams or God is showing you things or you see all these red flags with people, don't ignore them. Press into it and ask Holy Spirit to show you because people's hearts can change. They can change for the better or they can change for the worse, really honestly, at any given time. Because the enemy is always looking for someone to use to cause someone else to stumble. OK, and so if that person is not rooted and have a strong foundation themselves, they will be easily persuaded, easily persuaded to come against you. And in this season, you will experience some persecution. You will experience some backlash. Right. You have people probably throwing shade at you, you know, um, just all kind of things, especially if they see like people. So people are just miserable and they don't like to see anyone, you know, happy. And so if you're carrying around the joy of the Lord and they see that and they're not and they're miserable, that can cause them to be envious of you, too. So sometimes we're like, why are they envious of me? Why are they acting this way? I have nothing for them to be jealous of. Right. It can simply be just the joy you have of the Lord. So I'm, I'm warning you. This is a warning. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore those signs. OK, seize this season. OK. 
So back to um, the tree, right? So this tree, I'm going to go over just a little teeny bit here because once again, I'm not a professional um, gardener or a tree planter or anything of that nature, okay? So thinning cuts, um, this is, it says here, um, it is used to um, remove a side branch back to the trunk or parent branch, right? So you might have like a branch, you know, here that might be leaning or whatever. And like, I'm not sure, I can't explain it in great detail, you guys, but the tree pretty much has to be cut, but it's also how you cut it causes it to be, to, uh, to be rearranged and grown a certain way, right? And so sometimes during this pruning season, God has to rearrange, you know, how certain things are coming out and growing. Maybe you do have a have a um, God ordained relationship that God, you know, wants you to keep, but the dynamics of the relationship might change. <laughs> it might change. So He cuts it so to the point where, like, when it starts to grow back, it goes back a certain way. So it's flowing the way it needs to. All right, that's one example. The other one here it talks about is. The reduction cuts, right? Uh, this is removed from a larger branch or trunk back to a smaller um, diameter side branch, okay? Reduction cuts are commonly used in training young trees. They are also the only type of cut that will significantly lower a tree's height. And so here, where I was reading this part, I was seeing that with the reduction cuts, right, it can seem as though... Your my God, your circle is getting smaller, right? Your friend circle is smaller and it's being reduced, reduction, right? So God can rebuild it with the correct people, with the correct environment, with the correct, I mean, everything in its totality, right? God is realigning some things, but he has to reduce it. So it seems like you're going backwards, right? But really God is cutting some things away so you can have a healthy, you know, growth moving forward, okay? That's the reduction cuts, all right? And then the other one um, was called the heading cuts. So it, it removed the growing tip of a tree. This releases the side buds to grow, resulting in a more dense growth at the point of pruning, uh, another type of, of an undesirable heading cut is the removal of a large trunk branch back to a smaller side branch when the side branch is less than one third the size of the larger trunk being removed. OK, so here um, I, I'll have a, my camera up here. You can't really see what I'm seeing. But in here, it gives you um, this visual. And once again, it talks about how it has to be cut precisely it has to be cut a certain way, you guys. And so what I'm seeing, you know how like a tree, you know, the branches are growing and then at a very crevice here, that right there, sometimes we have to cut it off completely, but other times you don't. You have to go up just a little bit to the part that's dead and dried and you have to snip it or cut it off there, right? And so maybe you have like some, some good stuff coming out of there, but the tips of it has gotten old, right? And God has to go in and cut it away. That's why the word of God says that he is the vine dresser. He is the gardener. He is the professional at this. Not us, okay? Not other people, okay? He is the primary vine dresser. And so in rigging, it's, it's allowed me to see, I'm like, wow, vine dresser, they have to be skilled at their craft. They have to know exactly what they're doing because if they don't, they'll cut away the good stuff or they won't cut away enough of the bad stuff and it'll still grow rotten fruit. OK, and so, you know, God doesn't want you to lose the good stuff. And we go through this process pretty much like all throughout our journey. But as you mature in the things of God, it's not as intense, y'all. It is not. When I read it, it says as the tree mature. Right. Pruning is not as necessary. <laughs> I was like, my God, that is so true. That is so, 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 so true. When you a baby and an infant and toddler, you go through that toddler phase, you do have to be pruned a little bit more intensely to like get that foundation going and that foundation healthy. Because when your foundation is healthy, you're able to sprout out good fruit and it continues to grow. And God has to trim here and there along the way. OK, so seize the season seize the season okay <clears throat> so let me go back to my notes i hope that i hope you guys understood that i hope that actually that, um, that blessed you and gave, and gave you clarity again the article is on uh if you google let me go back to it again so i can tell you what site it's on um it is an article by 
Colorado State University called Pruning Cuts. So if you want to go back and look at that, please do. Please do. It can be a little confusing, though. But as I'm reading it, I'm asking God, Holy Spirit, show me what you want me to say and how you want me to compare this. So that was Holy Spirit, y'all. Um, and so I'm going to keep going. And so here, here. OK. And so I'm going to go back a little bit to when we are babies and infants, we don't we don't see danger. We don't see danger. We don't see that. We're not. We don't. We just don't see it, right? We want to love everybody. We want to encourage everybody, right? But everybody is not ready for that. Everyone is on different paths and different journeys to receiving like salvation. And so this is what here are what you should look for when it comes to friends, right? I hear, well, how do I know that they really against me? Like, I actually just had a client recently that was sharing with me. I, this was like two weeks ago. She was telling me about, you know, how she wanted to move in with somebody. Um, they're going to get an apartment together. And now she's a new convert, too. And uh, she was telling me about this girl. And when she was explaining to me, my sister was just like, mm, girl, I don't know about that. She said, I've been praying and asking God, should I move in with her? But he hasn't answered me. I said, well, sometimes God would just show you. Right. He wants you to see and sharpen your discernment. Right. So she's like, well, yeah, I mean, she seemed cool. We've been friends since he was like little kids. I'm like, OK, so I might just keep praying. And I'm like, God, I pray you open her eyes because my spirit didn't feel feel good about it. Um, But she has to make her own decision. So this was just yesterday. And she said, Shakita, she was like, I am so upset. She was like, she had been like, and so emotional all week this week because she found out her friend had been dragging her name in the dirt dragging her name in the dirt, talking about her behind her back. And I asked, I said, well, is she a believer? And she was like, she says she is, but her lifestyle does not line up with the word of God. And I'm trying to live right. Said, I'm not perfect. I'm a new convert. I still struggle in certain areas, right? She said, but I really am trying to like live right. I said, oh, child, that was a red flag all by itself. Because <laughs> you're not strong enough yet to hang around all these unbelievers you're not oftentimes people think okay i'm saved now you know i'm in a better place right with god i love god um, but they have all these friends who are living an alternate lifestyle and we think that we can handle temptation we think that we can go in here and be able to resist it no baby we ain't that strong Okay, we're not. <laughs> Nobody is. Okay, um, until you mature, and but then as you mature, then it becomes an assignment. Okay, so when you mature, if God tell you to go hang out with them, it's for a reason. It's ministry. It's for a purpose. It's not for you to go in and do exactly what they're doing. Okay, Paul did that. Okay, Paul was good at that. Okay, about meeting people where they were, but still being able to minister to them right in the middle of what they got going on. Okay, so. Here are some signs of some healthy friendships, y'all. Okay, Proverbs 27 and 17 says this. Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. And so what this means is that your friends, y'all should be sharpening each other, okay? Like, I, I, now I'm in my life where I'm very particular about my friends. I have friends, but I also understand their assignment in my life. I understand my assignment in their life and the role they have in my life and vice versa, right? And so a friend to me is someone who is going to, number one, of course, check on you, right? Hold you accountable, um, be able to sharpen you, be able to, you know, still love you and, still, and, and, you know, and see your flaws. They're not envious of you. They're not jealous of you, right? And if it tries to come in, they're going to kill it. Right. So like you need to be able to be around people who's going to sharpen you and encourage you in your faith, in your life and vice versa. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, that's what I love about me and my best friend. You know, my husband, my best friend, of course, God's my best friend. And I have my female, my, my female best friend. And we sharpen each other so much. When she's low, I help, I encourage her and vice versa. We don't allow each other to sit and waddle in what we're in our emotions, right? We have our moment, we express ourselves, then we're going to pray, okay? We're going to pray, okay? So iron sharpens iron. Remember that with your friends. It should not be one-sided. They should not only be calling you when they need something. You should not be only calling them when you need something, okay? That is not a true friend, all right? First Corinthians chapter 15 and 33 says this, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Many think, as I said before, you can hang around people who are dibbling and dabbling and things they shouldn't be doing and you be able to avoid the temptation. So false. 
again, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Okay. So you can't keep hanging around the same people you've been hanging around when you was in the world. All right. Not like that. Okay. Would they accuse you of being bougie and acting different? Absolutely. But that's called persecution that come with the territory. Okay. Um, Proverbs 27 and 9. Oil and perfume make the heart glad and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. So your friends should be able to counsel you and be able to pour into you. I'm not saying be your therapist. It's the difference. But if you're like hitting a stuck point, right, they should be able to offer you some wise counsel and some advice and vice versa. Okay. All right. Proverbs 13 and 20 says this. Whoever walks with the wise, hello, becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. I don't know about you, but I don't want to suffer any harm. <laughs> I want to be wise, okay? I want to be wise. All right. Proverbs 22 and 24 to 25 says this. Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man. Okay? It's saying man, meaning men, meaning women. Le least you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. And so... You can definitely be, you know, amongst people who are pretty probably angry people. They're irrational. They're they can be very reactive, right? And even though you're not that way, if you're hanging around, you know, this company, right, hanging around with people consistently, you will end up being entangled in something that you never asked for. Okay. And so these are just a few scriptures here about friendships, about company. If you go read on the book of Proverbs, it is full of so much wisdom and counsel about relationships, friendships, um, about how you should live your life, right? About evil, about good. And it talks about the measure you will receive from God if you operate in the evil or good. So good. So good, you guys. And so I encourage you um, to read that, to read that. All right. And so I'm about to wrap up, you guys. Okay. So let me see. Anyone had any questions? If you have any questions, um, let me know um, before I get off. And when I get off, I will say a prayer. Um, and so I did want to say this real quickly before I um before I pray and before we end. Um, is that you guys are gonna probably start seeing me do some like pop-up lives <laughs> here and there. Um the Lord has given me a word and he told me that he wanted me to start um, sharing with you all what I see. OK, what do I mean by that? Um, as you know, the world is shifting. The world has been it's in this great shift. And the Lord literally is like shifting the wheat from the tear at this point. OK, we see it all around us. But for me, you know, I've known this was coming for a while and there's so many different things going on that I see in the spirit and I have been for years. OK. And so most of the time, like I only really share 10 percent. Y'all only really see 10 percent of what God gives me and what um, revelations he gives me about certain things. Right. Because at, a, at that time, I don't feel led to share, but more so to pray and intercede for it. And so the Lord actually sent me a word to one of my friends who is prophetic. And I know she hears the Lord and I went back to God and asked him about it. You know, was uh, he want me to start sharing what I see, right? To encourage you all, to um, edify you all, to correct some of you guys. And so, you know, if you see me start doing that, don't be shocked. <laughs> don't be shocked uh, because now is not the time to be quiet, right? We have so many souls at stake. Um, so many people are becoming confused about what's going on. Should they go left? Should they go right? And it's just, I begin to just think about all the dreams I've had over the course of years. Okay. Years. I'm like, OMG. I'm like, okay, God, I got you. I got you. And so all week long, I just been meditating on that. I'm like, God, like, here I am. I'm your vessel. If you want me to say and share, you know, I'll do that. And they're going to be some hard topics. And they're going to be some topics that are going to be amazing to some of you all. OK, so I'm just putting that out there. And so you may see me do um, pop up lives. I'll try to do lives on up here or it might be pre-recorded. It might be typed out. I don't know. OK, sometimes I'll do especially on Instagram and Facebook. I like type out something God gave me and then I'll screenshot it and post it on Instagram. But it's kind of hard to do that on um TikTok because TikTok is more of a video platform. 
Um, and so if you are, you know, on um, YouTube or somewhere else and watching up here now, like follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, because that's where my primary, most of my content is placed at for the most part. Um, and so if you guys don't have any questions about um, your season, about what I um, taught you guys tonight, I go into prayer. I'm sure I put this is a really good. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Because I remember, you know, what it felt like going through that season. Y'all, it hurt like going through the pruning season. It hurt. It can be it can get lonely. So you need community and you need clarity. And what happens is like whenever we're emotional, the enemy plays on our emotions and make us think that we're by ourselves and that am I the only only one going through this no we all go through um different seasons and some are more intense than others okay and so don't feel like you're alone and you're by yourself what is God trying to teach you in this season start asking God that God what are you showing me about my season how should I respond in this season okay he would tell you and so there's um, probably about three or four more lives I would do on this. I'm not sure, you guys. You guys who follow me already know. I try my best to um, do, you know, follow the Holy Spirit as he leads me on what to share. Okay. And so I also put it on my podcast as well. Yeah, she said, I don't talk to just anybody through because most will understand exactly. Like if people are not believers, they won't understand because they're doing what they want to do. <laughs> and once you surrender to the Lord and give God your, your life, right? It, oof, he, 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 yeah. <laughs> it can get real intense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I went through that where I had friends that I had to let go of. And, you know, it didn't feel good, you guys. I was like, Lord, I was like, you know, I love this person. But it was almost like either we just stop talking cold turkey um, or you might have to tell them, hey, like in, in my life right now, God's doing the work and it's very difficult. You can share that with them. It can be difficult for them to hear. I'm a difficult for you as well, but it is worth it. Y'all I look back. I'm like, God, thank you, because I will be so stagnant right now in my life, in my journey with God. Very stagnant. OK, so I want to pray us out and let you guys go. And thank you all so much um, for watching. So, Father, I just thank you right now, God, for every single listener, every single person who came up here on tonight. For those who will watch the replay that, God, they'll be able to grab a hold of exactly what they need about their season. Holy Spirit, I ask you, God, to continue to give them strength, to, to, to continue to give them clarity and insight about what they're going through. Father, I ask you, God, to remove any bondage off their eyes. Father, I hope and pray, God, that they will not be moved by their emotions but they'll seek you in your word, seek you in prayer, and continue to seek godly community. And so, Holy Spirit, God, in this hour, God, I ask you, Lord, God, to continue to just cover, cover your people, God. Shield them, God, from danger seen and unseen. Holy Spirit, have your way in their lives, God. Help them, Lord, God, to reach spiritual maturity. Help them, God, to understand kingdom. The kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom is here. The kingdom, Lord, God, is what you care about more than anything. And your kingdom includes your children, the children of God. God, your sheep, God, your leaders, oh Lord God. And Father, I pray, God, for those, Lord God, who feel like you have forgotten about them. The Holy Spirit, you will speak to them, that you will breathe on them tonight, God, that you will even visit them, Lord God, in their dreams, God, in their visions, Holy Spirit. For those who have put down their cross, who have laid down their sword, Holy Spirit, I ask you, God, to strengthen them, God, to remind them of who they are and that, God, they're fearfully and wonderfully made and that, God, you have a place for them. You have a space for them, God. You want to use them, God, in a mighty and special way God you want to help them Lord God I by share their book here and I might share that see Holy Spirit that you are the answer that you are the door that God you have so much in store for them that there's no time Lord God to, to just lay down and just die but to pick up our sword God and fight the good fight of faith Holy Spirit because God it's worth it it's worth it all God it's worth it all in the end Holy Spirit to see God and see that we will be with you in the end so Holy Spirit I ask you God just to have your way have your way in their lives Lord and Father we love you Lord I thank you, Lord God, for a chance to be able to just teach your word. In Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. All righty, you guys. So I'm going to get off. Thank you all for joining. Waving at you guys. And I will see you guys in the next few days. <laughs> all right. Talk to you guys soon. And I'm ending now on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you all for watching.
Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Our prayer is that this podcast episode has blessed you. Don't forget to go and subscribe and leave us a raving review. If you would like to sow into this ministry or to this podcast, Pain, Passion, and Purpose, you can do so at Anchor FM slash Pain, Passion, and Purpose or Cash App dollar sign Shakita Torres. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you next time.